I wanted to go back almost a year with you here, Cliff, when this happened. This was one mm -hmm. of your posters you had put out suggesting, hey, you guys are at war, ping, hello. <laughs> we have to look at a different reality moving forward. Uh, this was the inception, of course, of the War Correspondent Report. Um, to some extent, I think the media has been somewhat uh, able to lull people back into sleep based on some of these events and the timing afterwards. But it looks now that this uh, wind is shifting very, very um, quickly. Do you agree with that statement? And where, where do we find ourselves now with respect to one of your WebBot data reports that suggested that at some point here in the near future, the SOC, the self-organizing collective, would make itself uh, visible to the rest of the population. Are we almost here now? Plot this through here, this war effort. Where, where are we now, Cliff? We're, we're very close to that point of revealing of the SOC. Now, th that's gonna, they're, they don't want to do that. They do it because they're sort of exposed and they figure they had to set out some level of explanation for that exposure, right? Right. And so, so that's when they will, it, it, they'll come out to a certain extent and say, yeah, this, this business is going on, right? Or has been ongoing. Right. Okay. And I would suspect that that will be following uh, April 20th, right? Following the, the uh, crash of, um, uh, or the collision of the old civilization that we're living in now with the new civilization that is, is being given birth here uh, right. through this process, right? And so that collision is going to be a great shock. That shock's going to reverberate all through May, and it'll be the uh, awakening shock for uh, the normies that will really jolt them awake uh, cumulative uh, in, in June or so. Is so, that... Is that what you meant, Cliff, earlier today with this particular tweet, Baltimore Bridge equals Pearl Harbor 2.0? I got a lot right. of flack retweeting that earlier today. People saying, oh, hey, come on, guys, you're fear-mongering. It's nowhere close to... I don't think we understand yet the ramification of what just happened today. The media seems to be... Um, um, not all on the same page of where they want to go with the narrative. It's still forming as it is now. Why are you making this statement? Explain okay. what's behind this. So uh, when Pearl Harbor happened, it was almost two weeks before there was any kind of a consensus across the United States that uh, it wasn't a, a fake attack. There were still newspapers. They, it was on all the newspapers, but the, the penetration of the news at that uh, level in that day was such that there were still people uh, you know, writing in their journals that they just heard about it two weeks later in, in Maine, you know, that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're in a period of time here where we're in hyper novelty. So no one's going to really believe anything. So you'll get all of the media out there trying to promulgate some form of a story. But this one's going to be very difficult for them because of the nature of where we're at relative to the interest that must be protected by the corruption that's in power at the moment. Okay, so uh, uh, it, it's extremely complex. So, it, all right, so... About six years ago, you can start finding articles, web posts, um, you know, blogs that were put out uh, about the discovery of how easy it is to hack container ships. Okay, They're, the um, uh, technology is not that difficult because the container ships, by their nature, in order for things like Amazon to be able to tell you when you're going to get your package, all of these incredible level of sophisticated convenience electronics have to have a continuous satellite connection for these ships all the way across wherever. And then just so they can get the same level of connection to all of the little barcodes on all of the containers and on the barcodes on the stuff inside, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is all driven by a, an incredible continuous stream that uh, that is basically the internet. So the part of the internet that we're using right now is less than 3% of the entire bandwidth of the internet. All right, so most of it is all of this uh, digital traffic between digital devices and it really impacts. So when we bring on something like AI that has to have a certain level of um, uh, resources devoted to it, it may, because we're coming out of that 3% that is the visible internet, it may really impact the other part of the internet if those resources are not there. And so we get this, interesting little blend of dealing with all of these circumstances. So now these ships can actually be sunk in route. 
If you know how to hack these boats, you can hack the boats. And the very first clue that the boat is hacked is the power goes out. Okay, because at that point, you have to convert the uh, the operational system over to this emergency system that they've got that you can control from the satellite. And it takes it away from the devices on the boat. Mm -hmm. And so then you could just open up all of the automated drains in the bottom of the boat and let it sink if you want. Right. right. Or in this case, steer it right towards the weakest member. Now, if you look at this, they try and they try and get hold of it. And then it then it something kicks out that back of that engine. Right. And yep. then the uh, it loses power again. But then right at that point, it hits the weakest member of the bridge. It was not just a straight on collision. It wasn't drifting. It was steered. Mm -hmm. It was actual actually um accurately steered as though it was a missile so right. this woman i know of i can't think of her name at the moment wrote a really good article about six or seven years ago about how she was worried about these things in puget sound at less less so there but also the columbia river and the waterways around los angeles because container ships could just be made, she said, to disconnect from their controls and be steered she used the san francisco bridge she said you know uh it could just be steered right into one of the giant pylons for the san francisco bridge now it wouldn't necessarily bring that down right because right. those bridges are set on basically little islands and so their pylons are back away from the water right but but also note here there was no attempt to that we're aware of that we can see any indication of there was no attempt to throttle back so it was not under human, in my opinion, okay, as somebody who's a sailor, as somebody who actually trained in the merchant marine, right, and worked right. on, worked on uh, oceanographic vessels and had a rating, in my opinion, that was not under manual steerage at that point, because you would have assumed they would have seen what the hell was going on, and you would have also assumed that everybody in there was reaching for that control to start you know, reverse gears, Captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, then it doesn't. It it steers at the last minute. It turns slightly to yeah. impact that weakest member and bring it down the small section in order that in order that the large section will fall. Uh, so you just mentioned uh, seven or six years ago these articles coming out on how easy that was, and now on top of that, of course, is the predictive programming from this movie "Leave the World Behind." We did a decode on that when it came out on in, in December. And what was interesting in that there is a clip here of people on vacation at the beach, looking at this big tanker heading straight for the beach, presumably here uh, having lost control. But we learn later on in the film here that it is indeed a cyber attack, and uh, they're being used uh, these ships as uh, direct directed weapons here throughout uh, the film. So too are the Tesla cars. Now, when you go back and look at that too, and I want to, uh, Joe's input on all of this, there appears, there's another video here we're going to show afterwards where it appears to that there might have been strategic explosives placed on stress points at the bridge and that those went off at exactly the precise time as the boat hit as well. So there's going to be some more decode on there. But first, your thoughts on this Hang on. predictive program. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. There saying the name of that boat i think was called white lion yeah let me scroll back one or two and there's some in the container ship also i think yeah this one here so basically uh the ship that crashed into the francis scott bridge in baltimore was headed uh, headed to sri lanka the flag of sri lanka is a lion and yes the one in the movie was called the white lion so there seems to be some connection there some people are stop right there Sorry. okay also all right so also the um, guy who was the previous captain of the ship that hit the bridge was Ukrainian, okay? Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that that guy is related to people that are Serbian that are now under suspicion for messing around with machines they shouldn't have. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the plot thickens, Captain. <laughs> right, right. Okay. The, guy, the Ukrainian fellow's last name is unfortunate because it's going to get him linked to several members of the Ukrainian intelligence service that, that also have associations with Serbia. Right. Now, is that... In all of this, a red heron, so to speak, because we saw the uh, one of the spy chiefs of the SFB uh, of Russia here earlier today suggest that uh, they were under uh, their position now was that Ukraine, the UK, and the US. And right. so, will will we see them 
ratchet it up slowly and then suddenly come to a conclusion, oh my God, we were attacked by the evil Russians, or uh, and how will they play that along the way? Because there are so many people out there now already pointing all of these fingers to everybody else, not accepting it as an accident, that the regime is going to have to run the flack to all of these other disparate voices all shouting off in tens of thousands of different directions. When the regime wants to pull us all around Russia, 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 even you uh, people that are, you know, uh, radical right wingers get on board here, Russia, Russia, Russia attacked us. Right? right. That kind of thing. So is, it's going to be tricky as hell for these people to pull that off. And is that is that where I imagine it's going to be tricky as hell for the SOC also to deal with this? Because is that at that point right. where we force the hand of CIC Trump here to make an appearance? Let's speak about that a little bit here. Where do you see that? And have you seen clues of that in the data here that you've been sifting through all day also? Yeah, I've seen clues of that in the data, but that's the, the clues there are more for June and into early July not in uh, April. Okay. Uh, and you're quite correct that the, the SOC has a real problem with all of this as well. Okay. Um, and so was this... Um, okay, so I'm presuming it's the Elohim worship cult that's behind this, right? The mother weffers um, that, are, that are behind, because they're behind all of this, the central banks and so on. This is a good excuse for a... Um, uh, crash in the market, uh, but but it won't be the actual bridge coming down. It'll be later when er, when it dawns on everybody what the import is of those no longer being able to be imports or exports right. out of that particular region. Canada is going to be massively affected. Okay, the entire East Coast, and then it's going to split the country in a particular way because of what's going to have to be done to get goods routed. Because uh, there was very, there were very few facilities in um, easily accessed open waters that did not require transporting up through long bays and channels that were like the Baltimore, Maryland area, right? right. River fed and all of these various different uh, tidal uh, effect mitigating circumstances, et cetera. It was a very nice port. And this is a very strategic infrastructure target when you look at it that way. Why don't I take a minute here, Cliff? Okay, I'm just going to pause that there for a second here too because in a, a, a tweet, she also describes how this is uh, dividing the country north and south. And when I read that earlier today, I'm like, whoa, wait a second. That was also in your WebBot data a while back where we would have a division between east and west, difference of uh, difficulty of communication, and also north and south to some extent here. That also being tied in to perhaps some ET overflight stuff that seems to be in the data also here perhaps for the next two months. How does that tie in here, what she's just talking about, about separating the country north, uh, north and south, Cliff? Okay, so this is where it gets really, really uh, wooey if you want, right? Uh, if you go back and look at the... Uh, uh, the Vedic astrology, uh, we are replicating a particular point in USA history, and we've just done it in a staggering way, slap in the face, as we have brought back the Mason-Dixon line. Okay, the line between the northern free states and the southern uh, it really was a demarcation between the northern states that were controlled by the um, the government of the United States relative to money and the southern states that were captive of the London banks. And this was in 1861. Mason-Dixon line preceded the split of the country. But th this has split us right along those lines, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's staggering how, how much of this is uh, playing out, how it's going to really uh, uh, impact us. The uh, she's seriously correct about how much uh, flow, because so we've been hit twice today, okay? It wasn't just that the harbor now, that the port is shut down for, for who knows how many years. So she's she talking four to, about, She says four to five maybe to rebuild. But, okay, but right, and that's just one aspect of this. That's getting all of the debris out so that there can be traffic, safe traffic in and out of that area, right? right. So that's gonna take a huge amount of effort that we don't have the resources there now on the East Coast to do. A lot of it's gonna take a year to get the, the large boats that will be necessary over there and the crane boats and so on. But there's another aspect of this, the bridge itself. 
the traffic that flowed across that bridge was the Basically, what, what would happen is ships would come on in, offload everything into the ports in that entire complex. If you get in and look at a map, it's giant. They would offload onto all these uh, ports, and then all the goods they offloaded would head both north and south, most of them crossing that bridge to get to their uh, destination. So yeah. we've been hit both on the incoming from the import side and then also on the distribution side, to say nothing of the minor amount relatively of export trade out of there although that was quite considerable and i really shouldn't make light of it right so right. i know i know for instance right now that uh there's this is how weird this thing is right how tight in it is there's a guy up north of me that's got uh i don't know maybe he's got 150 acres and he's got a lot of money and he's and he's building himself a massive prefab house up here and he'd elected to go prefab for a whole bunch of different reasons well his house has to come through that port because it's coming from Germany. They, they build them in factories in Germany, put them into container ships, ship them over here, and it comes through through Baltimore. So the rest of his house is not going to be arriving anytime soon. And then look at what it's going to do to the rest of the transshipment, okay, the ripple on effect, right? All of the stuff that's already in transit now has to be rerouted. That's going to tie up all of those ships because they won't be able to turn around and go back and get another load or carry another load out. So that's going to or so of routing. So you got people that are all over the planet now that are in planning for these kind of things, just freaking out about what they're going to do to get transshipment of goods. It's going to put a giant level of pressure on already pressurized container shipment and then it's going to put further pressure on port facilities which have to be booked like you would book an airline reservation oh i'm going to bring a ship in you can't just like show up and and you know get accommodated it doesn't work that way and then you also have to have all the trucks there with all of the empty containers to take the goods off of the ships etc 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 so you just explained the logistical nightmare <laughs> and all the angles that we're looking at here that might extend that four to five years further. 20, 25. Without, 20, 25. Without, 25 even years. Mentioning, without even mentioning the hyperinflation, the fact that we're going into right. hyper novelty and that all of these control systems are going down and that we're going into a make away <laughs> civilization as opposed to this top heavy down uh, structural point of view. So even more delays are going to come through all of that. Can we, um, do you want to look more into this? Do you have any thoughts on why perhaps there was a no-fly zone earlier today and why they're begging people and they're stopping all the drones from f floating there? Was there something else with the ship, with the containers themselves too? Have you heard any scuttlebutt on that? I, I, have been, I have been working on data, so I had not been looking at any of that. I didn't know that it had come out that there was a no-fly zone. But we did have weird data here, okay? So... Um, uh, for the past two times that I've done my little runs here, I keep coming up with this stuff around drones bringing down helicopters. Uh, so it may be accidental, or it may be that, oh, look, you're going to get a bunch of news helicopters flying around this bridge by getting a bunch of drones up there. Joe would be the one to tell you, could you crash a drone by flying it into the rotors or crash oh, yeah. a helicopter by Absolutely. flying it into the rotors? Yeah. 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 So... Maybe so. Maybe it's going to be something like that. We had drones bringing down helicopters in the um, in the data sets these last couple of times. Uh, Cliff, so let's get into some of this data. I took a few notes here before we went live today. Uh, I wanted to come back and ask you about the Israeli mistake. So wherever it fits yeah. in your timeline, uh, where that comes back, we need an update on that. The sock coming out into the open. Trump's return, how this ties into this potential financial crash that you're looking at, maybe potentially here April 20th, um, and what you're seeing in terms of this Elohim worship cult about them going absolutely crazy. You did a few posts on this earlier today suggesting that people are going to go crazy when they hear it, but the uh, the worship cult itself also is going to go uh, crazy in overdrive here, perhaps even putting people in jail. Or uh, urban environment, right? So maybe something along those lines, something very atypical, some kind of a shock that we'll be talking about for weeks afterwards, just people talking about with their neighbors, talking about the events. Um, I'm expecting the and have been for a couple of years now, uh, a Black Tuesday, okay? And it is coincidental that, you know, the, um, 
the astrology lines up with uh, Black Monday back in 1987 uh, for this particular point in time, which is, you know, coincident with all this other weird stuff coming out about um, the energies involved around April 20th. So I, I'm expecting that maybe on the 9th we'll get our Black Tuesday. Uh, you know, that was a that was a big deal. And the ripple effect uh, back in 87 lasted for many months. And that was the beginning of the, uh, you know, the bringing down of the wall and all of these kind of major changes that occurred uh, at that period of time. So I'm expecting that level of stuff magnified. Mm -hmm. And I'm also expecting that the building tension that we have now, and it's been building up, will come out crashing in the month of April. All right, so it'll come out as release language. Now, it, it could be that a lot of that release language uh, is in a major stock market ramp up. It's going to be hard to say how the regime is going to play this. One of the ways they could do would be to, and they may turn on the Elohim worship cult guys, right? Mm. Okay, so it, it's going to be really strange seeing how they play it out. Um, it's not going down the way that they wanted. So they were anticipating. So, all right, so the, um, uh, the, the people in charge are playing the Bolshevik playlist, all right? And so they were supposed to do things this spring in, an, in anticipation of an October surprise, an October revolution and communism come sweeping in here in the United States. And then uh, they would take over the 14 major cities in the United States here by population, many of which they already control, and they would, over the course of the next three or four years, turn these cities into armies uh, that they would use to go out and basically take over the countryside because of the famines that, that would be hitting by that point. So, uh, so this is just as the Bolsheviks did it. They took over the cities. There was the October Revolution. They took over the cities, but they didn't control the countryside. It took them until 1929 to actually conquer all of Russia and what we now think of as the former Soviet Union. So it took them over 10 years. They spent five years in the cities, and then they came out and took over the, the farms, and, and it went crazy. That's the same playbook that the CCP used in right? right. Anyway, so, so they're getting ready for all of that, but all of a sudden they've got a new problem. Now, they could, the Biden regime could come on out and dump all kinds of money into an infrastructure and they come on out and try and be, um, uh, you know, like uh, in the 1930s, uh, using this as a big effort to try and mobilize the national will to rebuild the bridge, spend all the money, and it would, it would re they think, reinvigorate their hold on power as well as the economy, which they know is shit, all right? Mm -hmm. So um, they, that would be one way that they could approach it. Their problem is going to be if they did not do it, so to speak, right? Right. And if they're, so if they're wondering, okay, who did this and why? Because it, it'll be the why part that will really bug them uh, because the Biden regime is really tied in with um, the UK and with the WEF and all of this sort of thing. So um, th the other approach to it is that we could have um, – the crash, the market crash, absent from, or basically from these levels, absent uh, a big push that the Biden regime may try and do, trying to, to do this, high, uh, you know, it'll be hyperinflation, but they would try and get the Fed behind them, say that we're going to have a big infrastructure spending and all you companies get all geared up, et cetera, et cetera, right? And also it would hire up all of the, uh, you know, the illegal um, invaders, the, you know, the quote migrants. Uh, yeah. so, so they've got a lot of problems there. They seem to be uh, a threat in that earlier today, suggesting that they would rebuild it and perhaps uh, these uh, pre-crime departments. Where do you say? <laughs> I think you're going to say this, so therefore I'm going to put Joe and JC and Cliff in jail here, just in case they say it. Um, <laughs> speak about that too. That was in your web of data, but in the latest run here, what are you seeing in terms of these new tactics? Perhaps one last grasp at trying to regain the control of the narrative. What are they going to do, and are going are they going to be successful retaking the narrative? or is this already lost for them cliff it's already lost even even here in my state they've now got a quote law that i'm just just waiting for it to to i think it's been signed but it has to go through this uh processing before it takes effect but anybody will be able to turn anybody else in for hate speech and 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 uh you know crime think right and there and here's the the hell of it they've got a two thousand dollar plus bounty on there for you turning in your neighbors and so 
I'm just waiting for that to occur. And then I would let, let it happen. I just happened to tell people on Twitter, oh, it's live today. Because at that point, anybody could simply get a list of Washington state law enforcement agencies and call them up from any place on the planet and say, I want to report this synagogue. They've got a Talmud in there that it's a racially motivated crime. Yeah. And so every, every synagogue, every rabbi can be reported, and you'll get $2,000 plus for doing that. And you could be in Pakistan. So right. imagine all the Pakistanis that have access to call centers that want to make a few bucks. Is this when we get the reports of all these tunnels underneath these, uh, like we had in New York there just a couple of months ago? Is this coming out more and more yeah. now? Yeah. 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 It's really sad, you know. I mean, I've been trying for years to wrestle with and deal with this issue because like most of the uh, population, it is difficult for me to conceive of a mind that can be that evil, right? right? That can express evil that way. I mean, yeah. I can see doing evil in, in the anger of the moment, but I can't see living a life uh, generationally that right. promotes such an idea. So it's difficult for me to, to envision individuals that are like that. But nonetheless, we're, we're having to confront the fact that they do exist and that now we have to deal with it. And so here's the problem. In the past, uh, in modern human history, which is to say from the Kali Yuga, so in the past three, 4,000 years, um, we've had over a thousand expulsions of Jews from various different locales. But now we've had a situation where the Jewish owned media, banking, uh, military industrial, uh, pharmaceutical industrial complex, all owned by the Jewish population, is now being indicted for these various crimes that used to get Jews kicked out of various towns or principalities or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so in this sense, we're getting a true colors revealing kind of a moment. But we don't have the option of expelling Jews. Where are they going to go? You know, we can't kick them off planet, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, as much as, uh, what's his name, Dave Chappelle's joke of space Jews is <laughs> hilariously funny and would be, you know, quite apropos if we could do that. Right. Uh, I just don't see it happening. Right. So we now have Well, to somebody has to operate those Jewish space lasers <laughs> <laughs> that Andre Taylor Green was being asked about on mainstream yeah, news. Yeah, yeah. And, you um, know, she really, they're on airplanes anyway. But, right. you know, so, so at this point, we have to confront the fact that, that Earth does not have a Jew problem, all right? Earth has an Elohim problem, and right. a big, bad Elohim problem, and a really nasty Elohim worship cult problem. Right. Um, let's get into this hyper-novelty also. I have uh, Heidi Vandenberg in the chat. She says, hello, Cliff. And uh, oh. she sent me a message just before the show saying, hey, I just registered for Rumble because I got to watch your show tonight. So <laughs> Heidi, uh, welcome back. Yeah, uh, it's you, been Heidi. a long time. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, she's saying, of course, yes, the Vedic transits are insane right now. But I wanted to harken back on something you just said about the port and how uh, disruptive it could be and how we don't yet all know the uh, outlying consequences of all this. Uh, Bix was in the chat also saying, hey, there's a massive LBMA and uh, London Metals Exchange Warehouse in Baltimore area. Uh, he and Jenny Moonstone were predicting just last week here on Road to Ruda on the private road uh, that this uh, there, there would be a bridge over troubled waters and that perhaps there was a, an event here on the horizon, this was Jenny uh, picking this up, that would... Um, prevent the flow of metals and perhaps uh, create a bigger havoc here on the control systems. Now, you've had it in your web data for quite some time um, that silver at some point would be uh, broken free of this manipulation. You talked mm -hmm. about the harvesting of the corn. To some extent, we're starting to see now um, the intelligence agencies being called out for all of this. So we're, we're, yeah. we're at that point now with the, um, the farm products being recalled at least, or at least uh, being pointed at. How close are we? And is this event perhaps, as uh, uh, Bix is suggesting here, uh, leading us into this new price for gold and silver? I think you told uh, the three of us last week uh, that silver was going to be fighting all the way up here in the summer. Can, can you share that with the honest member? Where are we going here with uh, gold and silver? Uh well, gold to a lesser extent, but uh, silver is going to get to that point where we're doing the, you know, a dollar up a day and then two dollars the next day and then five and then up to twenty dollars up in a day. That kind of thing. We're very that'll happen probably this year uh, in this summer. I mean, through this uh, June and July, the the there's a big amount of data of emotional import 
uh, for middle of July. Okay, from actually from July 3rd, but it's going to peak around the 15th and 16th. And that is is creating an emotional ripple effect ahead of it that that is making all this very muddy. Uh, the the common tie in this all the way through is the Elohim worship cult at the level of the financial suppression of everything. And so I'm of the opinion that that the uh, removal of the bridge will have effects that we won't see until the 8th or the 9th or the 10th that will tell us, oh my God, look what has really occurred here. And it may well be that that has shut down the ability of the um, people suppressing silver to get silver out of warehouses to other individuals under these kinds of conditions. Now, remember, we saw that that would, that there would be in the data way the hell back when that we would have conditions that would uh, drive it to unobtain, un, unobtainium in a very short period of time. And right. so those kind of things are usually not, it turns out, the result of um, a lot of things happening all at once. Rather, the short period of time stuff showing up in the data really turns out to be all of us have an event happening, and then it takes some time, and then all of a sudden we grasp the significance of it, right? It just happened, yeah. Right, so it's more of us having to get in sync with a mental thing and that's why it happened so sh in such a short period of time it's just like because the word can spread oh my god no more silver shipments right. you know and think of how that would impact all of the the markets so, slowly at first and then uh, suddenly um yeah. joe let me ask you about your dreams to the extent i know you've shared some of this on your patreon with your uh, community there at patreon.com forward slash jason four what were you looking at for april to the extent that you want to share here with this group here and how does that tie in now to what we just saw in baltimore and what cliff is picking up in his data also perhaps on or around april 20th share that with the audience joe yeah so i was in a I had a dream. I was heading to New Mexico with, with two friends. I never got to even see their face. And just, that was the dream. There's two guys with me. We're riding out to New Mexico. I'm coming up to a stop sign. That's a T and I'm like, shit, I don't know which way I should go. I better put in an address that I know of where we're going to be at roughly to just so that they can tell me which way to go. I'm like, let me just pull over in the middle of the meeting. It was like the middle of the night. Pull over in the middle, start to get ready to punch it in. And I look and I see this lady walking, like about to walk in front of the, the car, our car. And I'm like, oh, I know her. Like, I, I recognize her. Shit, she's in tears bad. Let me, let's get out. Let's go see what's up, man. So I get out and I walk up to her and she's kind of looking down, but she's crying really bad. And I'm like, oh my God, are you okay? What's wrong? What's going on? And I'm expecting her, but based on the level of, crying and emotions i'm thinking she's gonna say you know my kid just got ran over by a car i just right. lost my husband you know like just uttered the worst thing that could ever happen to you in your life and she just looks up with you know crying and everything and she goes the market's gonna crash in april and then boom wake up mm. and i'm like damn but she didn't say which market and i'm like well shit i'm you know i'm, I'm waiting on this 20 cent xrp man because she said the crypto market and i gotta guess Whoa. you know but I think it will. Be how, how do I market. play this one? <laughs> I think it will start with the stock market. We may have right. some other black swans that cause a real quick right. crypto smash and then a real quick recovery. And then way off we go, I'm thinking. Yeah. So maybe it'll play out like that. You know, I, I, I'm not real sure. Um, can, you, can you, Cliff, add to that too? In the older web data reports, you were talking about this eventual big crash uh, and that. It's essentially, it would bring everything down, but then we would see a very quick pickup in cryptos, but everything else would not rise again the way it was in previous terms. And you were specifically talking about real estate. Okay, at that hang on. Yeah. I just, since Cliff's here, can I just, he said that the gray one, most people, <laughs> most it, people would like. It. <laughs> Take your headphones yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh. okay now now it's a party <laughs> <laughs> now that's still donahue Don he said they're not going to recognize me when i put my my, yeah. my wig on <laughs> I love it. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> these are troubling times but we do need to laugh <laughs> folks so, bear right. with uh, so yeah cliff this idea of this a weird transition of time where we let go of the old system everything crashes and then suddenly we have perhaps one two but maybe even three resets you sure that there's a lot of new audience members yeah, okay here. so 
the three reset part was basically the powers that be deciding that we're going to try and make make all the plebs take these uh, devices. And so the first reset is the the central bank digital currency. Then they'll right. come up with something when we reject that soundly. They'll come up with something else, and then they'll come up with something else, and then fade away. Those are not necessarily. Uh, directly tied to the actual activities of all the markets and stuff. Now, to Joe's point, right, that everything would crash, it is conceivable, especially now that we've had this particular event. Did we there do? we go. Okay. Um, now that we've had this particular event, it is conceivable that we could have the cryptos take a big hit if there was an attack that would take the internet down for a while right? Because mm -hmm. you would have the basically everything on hold, but you would also have in that period of time, you would have all those people that have put in all of the trading orders that they might not have been as well thought out as they anticipated. And under certain circumstances, they could be triggered by a lack of power, a lack of other data, the, you know, the machines that, that uh, keep track of the indices that they're basing their trade on, not getting a feed so everything drops off over time, etc. And so you could have that, that circumstance arise. And then it would pick up very, very rapidly. The, um, the rest of it just won't, right? The, there's going to be all kinds of problems with uh, gold and silver and uh, precious metals otherwise as well, platinum, palladium, and, and so on, especially now that we don't have transport, all right? And we won't have transport for who knows how long. It, is, it, is, it would be predictable that at least 60 days there will be um, ships still trying to offload their uh, load now uh, due to no port facilities, all right? It might, so that would be two months before they could get turned around to pick up another load somewhere else. And so that kind of a ripple means that basically we'll still be dealing with uh, port disruptions just on the offloading side of it, uh, import disruptions for the rest of, of this year. Uh, and then so all of 2025 will be dealing with these issues and then so on and so on for a number of years. Those kind of things uh, are going to be major, major market um, movers. Will and they, you know, and will we have a crash on the on the ninth after the solar eclipse uh, as a result of this? Uh, if we are are going to have a crash, this certainly brings uh, a, a market crash more forward based on what's going on here. Now, imagine a situation where this is exacerbated by uh, infrastructure problems. that relate to telecommunications that affect banks. All right. Wow. You've mentioned before also that um, when we have stock market crashes in April, they're very different than the cyclical ones we typically get in October, that they, they spell out bigger, massive uh, changes. Speaking of that, I have to get back to Veritasium. Um, one of your old uh, web about data reports, uh, the big line was, at some point, the government comes in hat in hand to Reggie Middleton to try to fix what was broken. As we're seeing now, some of these temporal markers line up for us. Do you think those conversations perhaps are already happening between the SOC and Reggie? Uh, do you point that out to me? No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're, you're making the assumption that it's the SOC. I'm okay. not. Okay. Um, directed energy weapon um, uh, expose in the last couple of months. Uh, Laheno, I think, was the first one that really put it on the radar for a lot of us uh, doing the research. Uh, then in Mexico, uh, we're seeing these later. Well, there's groups. Paradise California was the, 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 the original forest fire there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you suggested maybe also that we could be looking at one in Florida. Is that still in the data? Have you seen that today? You share that with the audience. Uh, we're still, weather wars are still way up there. Uh, I've got some notes that are looking for this. Hang on a second. Okay. They're showing up at about the same time that we get into major shortages in the second, third, and, and uh, weeks of April. Oh, uh, hang on a second. I got to see where I wrote my note. I didn't bring my glasses with me. There we go. Okay. So, um, so we know that the, the space lasers are not really from space. Okay. They're from airplanes. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be part of, this is going to contribute to what's going on here is that the, uh, the fuels Air, aviation fuels that used to go down the I-95 corridor will not because of the 
a bridge being taken down, okay? So they won't be able to fuel chemtrail planes. There will be a major impact on airlines all up and down the East Coast because they won't be able to get fuel shipments. This will, this will be, make a big level of shifting, just like with the boats trying to offload. So now they'll have to shift as much of the air traffic as they can uh, over to the West here, right? And so that's going to impact the weather wars. So uh, Joe's going to have to tell us, I don't know when the dry period is in Florida, but they will have a very brief window to get something going in that dry period, but they're going to have to fly for a long damn time because they won't be able to launch from the East Coast if that if that dry period is any time past May, because we're going to run out of fuels relatively quickly. And you're going to start seeing like um, uh, Berlin airlift kind of things where you'll have military start having to fly in fuel and stuff to airports just to keep the airports functioning. This, this chaos is just, you have no idea, Guy, absolutely no concept of, of what this has done to the North American continent. This will have ripples that will be impacting Alaska two weeks from now. Wow. All of Canada is going to be affected two weeks from now. You'll, you'll start seeing, uh, you know, the um, $10,000 a ton in chocolate. Start, right. start, thinking, start, start thinking $100,000 a ton in chocolate to get it delivered to factories. Right, right. Uh, Joe, you've had dreams about having to leave Florida. Uh, I think mm -hmm. one in your plane, one in uh, uh, one of your uh, Winnebago's or something like that. In this particular video, uh, they're talking about some of these green lasers here scanning. Apparently, this was in Cape uh, Coral, Florida here this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, are they perhaps mapping now for this next uh, directed energy uh, weapon kind of scenario that we've seen here over the last couple of months? Share your dream and what you think about here, what the future holds for Florida. Joe. Yeah, I've not gotten anything about any kind of either fires or anything like that with all that I've gotten for Florida in particular was flooding events. Okay. Like I remember getting an RV or something. I was fleet I was heading north out of Miami area and I was like just getting out of the nick of time because I knew like a wall of water or something was coming and I'm like you know, I got to go north, you know, go keep going. And mm -hmm. both the interstates were just like stopped. And I'm like, there's only mm -hmm. two. So it's like, uh, I can go to the right e East coast or left west, you know, uh, west side. And there's one interstate on each side and they're not exactly real wide either. So it's my God, if, you know, if you had to leave Florida, forget about it. You might, that's why I've always prepared. Like I'll just stay, but I mean, if water's coming, you know, <laughs> you're not exactly staying. So my wife had, she, I remember some dreams she had and she was like, you know, we got, we went to leave in a vehicle and it like, it wasn't tall enough. So we came back and then got into maybe an RV or something. And then we were able to leave. She goes, then when we came back to look at like, what do we have left? You know, we were surprised like, Oh wow. It didn't quite really damage our house or anything. So it was like, it was a close one, you know, whatever, hmm. however that looks. Um, I've heard from a, another psychic. I know that had mentioned, uh, Oh, they're gonna they're gonna start hitting Florida with those weapons. When's and, uh, when's the dry period there? Yeah, May starts getting around May, May, June, July. They already have forest bands here where I am, uh, between Montreal and Ottawa, and that's so weird because we're usually flooded. All it's flooded in my backyard right now, but they're saying because of temperatures, we're like we're having these brush fires already. I'm like, where? It's like full yeah. water still. So they're 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 pimping this out here. So I don't know if that's they're preparing for another summer of these uh, crazy forest fires here in Ottawa and the rest of the world. Um, you're saying that that's pretty much in the web about data. They're 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 pushing that again this year. It's going to be a big part of our reality. Wow. Yeah. There's all kinds of weird stuff about um, uh, videos as the as a uh, motivating factor uh, around um, uh, uh, there's we're gonna have to come up with a new word for these guys that go around and spray napalm uh, in the forest in order to create forest fires along particular county roads and this sort of thing. but there there are people that are paid to do that. Uh, in mm -hmm. order to pimp out and, and create and drive the climate narrative. So some of these guys are going to get... Um, uh, okay, so in 2024, in a general sense, the data has come up with something I've, I haven't seen other than through an allusion to it, you know, a reference to it. 
uh, but in in this time where I'm seeing the actual language for uh, justice, for vigilanteism, for reaction, for activity, for dynamic response. And so I'm expecting uh, that at some point here, we're going to get citizens constituting common law courts uh, in various um, different uh, areas, jurisdictions, and the local um, controller structure, the maritime courts, perhaps even sheriffs, but certainly police and these kind of things will freak out, okay, because it will not be under the control of the maritime uh, judges, none of these elected officials and so on, but they will do legally constitute common law courts. In common law courts, lawyers are not allowed, okay? You argue for yourself and the, and the uh, you know, the prosecutor argues for the people. And the, right. all of this stuff is done under vote at the circumstances at the time. I don't have them here, but there's books on how to establish these. They're a history in the United States. And I'm expecting that this will be a sign of uh, or a um, temporal marker, the, the first constituted um, common law court that comes to our knowledge, taking action in the form of an arrest and so on, is really it's reaching the visible sign of a wave of vigilanteism that leads into justice uh, as a dynamic activity. Woods, a logger, sees somebody coming along spraying napalm and setting fire, and right. he just pulls out his rifle and, and deals with it, right? And then right. we find out about it as he has to explain all the circumstances to the sheriff and it all comes out. So right. there's this event, lag time, and then another lag time for us to get the information and then absorb it. And then there's that instant change as as that piles in and we shift gears mentally. And that's what we're in for this summer. And the normies are not up to it. And that's why June and July are going to be terrible for them. And in the end of, end of July is when the data seems to indicate that we run right in smack into the Elohim. Right. Um, okay. So there's almost 19,000 in the live chat. There are a lot of new people, Cliff, and they're like, who are the Elohim worship cult again? So first, <laughs> this is a long conversation, guys. I encourage you to go watch this video. I did my best to put all of this into this one video here. I did three series of these, by the way, Angels and the Great Deception Exposed. This particular video with Paul Wallace, we get into all of the mistranslations in the Bible and who these Elohim are. Do you want to spend just a few minutes here? Just, for the just here a couple tonight? of minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, just to explain the cult, though, all right? Yeah. So the Elohim are, are space aliens, and they are the people that the Bible describes as the Sky Council. And uh, 200 of these individuals landed on Mount Hermon, and they invaded Earth, and they, uh, this is in the same, in the Vedas, these are the people that are the gods in the Roman pantheon, the Greek pantheon, etc. These individuals invaded Earth and did things to humans such that they could then come down, just technically advanced space aliens looking very much like us, that they could come down and claim to be gods. There were people on this planet that fell for that. These people lived primarily in the region of uh, Babylon, okay, that that uh, fell for this um, this uh, scam, so to speak, by these space aliens, and they became the space alien worship cult. The and these space aliens are of a species that they call themselves L or L O A. Mm -hmm. The the people that that um, fell for this scam spoke Proto Hebrew. Okay, in Proto Hebrew, when you saw many of these space aliens, it was a plural, and so you would say Elohim meaning many Eloa. Okay, so that's where the Elohim part comes in. The cult itself is Babylonian. The cult itself is what the Bible calls and what Jesus called the Pharisees, the synagogue of Satan, okay? In my opinion, Jews are wrapped around this cult like a protective cloak. And you can't get to this cult because you have to fight your way through all these Jew normies that think they are participating in an active sort of like real religion as opposed to this inculcated Stockholm syndrome religion that is Judaism. Mm -hmm. If you read the tenets of the Babylonian Talmud or the Mishnah Talmud and you read that you will and you're not Jewish, in my opinion, you will find a lot of times where you're you are uh, in a state of revulsion that you know how could they be a so stupid as to write it down and b how could anybody think this way you know in any event though so this group is what we call the satanists 
they actually believe that the, their God is Lucifer and Lucifer is the good guy. And, and they've taken this idea and they took it out of Babylon and they brought it into Judaism. And so that's at the core of Judaism. If you're a Talmudian Judas, uh, right? Not if you're a Torah believer, not if you're that kind of a, uh, a, a Jew person. But if you're if you believe in the law that is written down now, finally in the Talmud, then you are under the sway of the Pharisees who have have constituted themselves now as the, these rabbinical councils. And so in this in this sense, the organizational structure is the structure of the rabbis, the schools forum, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's the the Elohim worship cult. So in the same manner that. The United States has been infiltrated by the communists, and in the same manner that the communists have control over large parts of the United States and our organizational infrastructure, in that same manner, the Pharisees have infiltrated Judaism, and in that same manner, they have power and control over the Judaics, the Judaism itself, and the people that call themselves and think of themselves as Jews. In their structure, they identify these individuals by the term Zionist because of their action, not because of their lineage or their ideology or their philosophy. So I go a step further because not so a lot of Zionists, in my opinion, are simply normie Jews that are um, brainwashed, just like you could get a KKK member is just a normie guy trying to, you know, fit in with the crowd and do what all the other guys in his area does, that kind of thing. Just drinking there's the Kool-Aid, yeah. Right. There's a lot of those. Okay. Yeah. So I try and differentiate to get at the people that are actually causing the problem. Right. So because I think we have an Elohim problem on this planet because the Elohim, the space aliens, have not gone anywhere and there's stuff going on on the moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a there is a lot of them. Um, so anyway, and so that's that's where we are in this thinking. And sorry to be obscure about that. I, I just say it without even, you know, going into any details and trying to explain it because I just, just figure everybody knows. Did, well, did I got about 40, I got about 40 hours of research just to do those two interviews guys. So I, I try to condense that. I'll just go check it out on rumble and then we can come back and have a further conversation on perhaps what's happening in the moon. Cliff and I are supposed to do a part two to the sci-fi world lunacy. Maybe we'll do that in a month or so. Uh, but stay tuned, but do your own research. There's a lot in here uh, for sure. Before I let you go, Cliff, I wanted to talk about the yugas of time. You mentioned that earlier uh, in the show, and I had um, uh, Heidi there in the chat saying, yeah, the alignments are really crazy now. We're entering this new world. I have this on the chart now too. But I want you to speak about this hyper novelty and the effects on humans. To some extent, we have old texts that are being translated now. As we go through these cycles around the planet, we have uh, other examples of perhaps humanity going through that. So talk about, what perhaps is happening to humans now, we're seeing people with different abilities show up. Apparently, this is going to be exacerbated here as we move into 2024. Uh, I saw a news article today that was absolutely crazy that some people are also having what mainstream news is calling a, a visual kind of disorder, but they're starting to see demons out of the faces of other people. Is that like in they live, you know, when they wear the glasses right. or this part of hyper novelty where people are starting to see perhaps some of these people who are not who they appear to be here on the planet. How do you tie that in? And let's talk about okay, this. Okay, so, uh, so the idea of the yugas is that the uh, our solar system, all right, so we don't live in a flat plane. Our solar system is uh, all of us planets being pulled around behind the sun like a comet. Our solar system right, uh, has a sinusoidal orbit up and down the edge of the Milky Way galaxy. It takes 12,000 years to rise up, 12,000 years to go down. And when you're in that middle dense area, that's the Kali Yuga, and the humans are also dense. So we've just come out of one of those. So A, we don't know how this will manifest. So nothing is off the table. Mm -hmm. B, we've had historical references that as you get towards the golden age, you get skin changes where you have blue people, green people, etc. right? All different kinds of changes, eyes and these kind of things. So we can't rule these things out because we have no real history with it. And all of our history has been occluded by the Elohim worship cult guys who have to do that in order to prop themselves up as gods. So we don't know for sure. But we do know that there are actual effects. My data sets back in the 90s were saying we're going to get into this period of strange energies from space. 
we're there now. The sun went from yellow to white. It's It's got a very intense shade of uh, something going on in it right now as we get into this, this next phase. The guy who is most accurately reflects the mathematics of the yugas who really understood them was this uh, guru, this mathematician, Yuktasvar in, in India. And he, he um, said that we left the Kali Yuga in 1700. I disagree by a year. I think it was 1699, and I have reason to believe that, uh, uh, a ways to, uh, reasons why I believe that. In any event, though, he said that it's going to follow the trail that we had in the past. So the, the uh, combined, the um, length of the Kali Yuga, the descending Kali Yuga, and then the rising Kali Yuga was 2,400 years. Uh, we have various subsets of that. As you leave each of these yugas, you will have like a hangover affecting the populace going forward. We're now coming out of that, that hangover. That hangover for us was 300 years plus the following 75 years. We've gone through that 300 years since 1699, and we've gone through 20, we're in the 26th year of that 75 years. In that 75 year period of time, we're supposed to have 25 years building to chaos, 25 years of living through chaos, and then 25 years of chaos fading. When we live through chaos in that middle 25 years, and we're there now, we're in that 26th year, when you live through the chaos period, from the galactic center that is now coming into our solar system will start triggering effects in the human. In And it may be just mental, but there's no way we can rule out the possibility that we actually have gene sets that will respond to these emanations, okay? Right. And so we've had weird um, effects that we're all aware of. You know, hey, been thinking about the Roman Empire lately? Right. You know, that kind of stuff, right? All of these mass uh, psychic kind of episodes be on a collective fashion. So, so there's nothing off the table that way. Now, so that having been said, how many people are having trouble with their sleep? <laughs> Right. Uh, <laughs> so, so now we can start getting into some of this. And you see that, indeed, we could have people. I suspect people will become far more psychically sensitive. I suspect we will become in tune with some of these energies. I also suspect a lot of people will go batshit uh, exhibiting, you know, going mentally ill. And so it's going to be really, really, really rough that way. But I also suspect on the other end of it, we will have some exceptional individuals pop up that will have new and uh, hopefully socially supporting um, uh, skills and abilities, really. Right. It, abilities, because it'll take a while to develop a skill out of it. Right. But remember that if we look at the ancient history and you see all of the uh, non-Elohim, you get out, have to get out of the Elohim worship cult influence to get clear text, right? Because they, they were the ones that invented superheroes. They're the ones that think that, uh, in fact, Superman's last name was L, right? Oh. Something, something L. Okay, yeah. if you go to texts that predate all of those, and you start looking at the old Sanskrit and stuff, you'll find stories, a lot of them in the form of hymns, that describe individuals that had a very interesting kind of characteristics and skills, right? And, and so you get these uh, ideas even outside of the Bible and stuff of people that were exceptionally long lived, mm -hmm. right? So this was in the past. We know that some of those individuals lived through and carried these abilities into the Kali Yuga. And if you go look, you can find some individuals in areas in India and so on, where I, I think in this one episode where he was 163, mm -hmm. but he was like 108 and he had two sons. Uh, with a woman who was in her 50s, I think, or 40s. Okay, so this was unusual for humans now and unusual for humans at that time. But it may have been a, a holdover, a remnant of the way things used to be way back in, in that pre-Kali um, Yuga period. So I don't, I don't put out, uh, or I don't put down a lot of ideas that people are experiencing strange effects because we have no way of knowing how this is going to manifest right. except that i know that we won't think it's normal and so right. that's part of, that's part of the hyper normal uh situation we're in now the other part of the hyper normality 
is the fading of the idea of authority. Right. Where there's anybody that can tell you anything for certain and for sure because they've lied to us for so long, you simply won't accept it. So here is a really concise way of thinking about it. We're, we're in a period now, and I'm already there personally, but by June, we will get into a period of time where a lot of the normies will no longer give their consent to be governed. Mm -hmm. Imagine imagine the time you spoke about uh, before i let you go cliff uh, first of all thank you again for all of your time here today sure sure i'm you sorry joe i didn't mean to come in and suck all the air out <laughs> no no i appreciate it we no, all wanted fine. to hear from you we haven't heard from you in a long time and i appreciate uh, joe also your patience and all this and uh, and the audience too uh you just mentioned sleep is a big problem for now uh in the last two weeks here with these uh eclipses going on the one that's coming up here too we're getting reports of this all day long here on our uh, chat uh, rooms here during our videos how did you come to the pure sleep thing? Why is it good? And why is it, could it be a helpful tool here as we move into even more uh, deeper into hyper novelty and crazy town really starts uh, appearing yeah. for the normie land here, Cliff? 28 pounds, right? Uh, so, and I'm 182 now. So, you know, big difference. Um, anyway, so I came up with pure sleep after about eight months. It took me about eight months to come up with a formula to figure it out, to do the research. I was very damage from the anesthesia you know that's why it took so long and then i had to experiment with it i finally came up with a, the uh, the formula and it works and it was like oh you know the beauty part of it is you feel rested when you wake up which is a big deal if you're only able to sleep three or four hours a night at any given time because of the nature of you know cycling food and the in the gut surgery etc 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 right right so um, uh, it, uh, it really is a, a significant aid. It's 2024 and I'm still using it. <laughs> so, and I have no problem with it in terms of, you know, it doesn't affect the gut or anything like that. And right. it, it's not, it's not addictive. It has GABA in it, right? Which is why you can't sell it in Japan because they've listed that as a uh, prescribed substance, but that's a precursor to the human growth hormone. So every night, you know, I mean, it, it, you get some muscle growth with it. That's amazing, especially if uh, people are inclined right now to get back into fighting shape with everything that's going yeah. on in the world. It's important to recover, and you do that during your sleep. Uh, guys, the links to the uh, Pure Sleep here is in uh, the description box below. You'll find that on Pure Bulk. Uh, please do go check it out. If uh, you're having trouble sleeping, why not? Uh, natural product there. I love that. Uh, Cliff, before we go, to, let's talk about Shungite. Why Shungite is important right now, how that ties into the Elohim maybe coming back, targeting some individuals, and this whole hyper novelty and how Shungite can help us through all of this. Right. Shungite is that mineral that's from Russia that hit the part of Russia that's called Karelia, a giant meteorite of it. It is a, a mineral that has a Buckminster fullerenes in it, and it has it in a particular kind of a structure that allows this uh, fullerene to um, absorb EMF. And so if you have a touch on your body here, it gets um, uh, the EMF across the whole body. It equalizes it across the whole body. So theoretically, and as far as I'm able to test, are mitigated by the fact that I've got this, even though it's on the front of me. Right. So uh, it's, it's tremendous for dealing with this kind of stuff. Uh, especially like 5G, if you're around those 5G lights and these sorts of things. Radiation is really key. If you go listen to uh, Dr. To Lee Merritt, she has this theory that all of our diseases, even going way back into the 1800s, are related to the increasing um, electromagnetic frequency coming out. And she can plot these flus developed on this particular schedule when these particular frequencies come on out. And I don't think she's particularly wrong. We're in a position here now where we can't go back. Right, so you need to understand we, we will never go back to a frequency free world. We'll never go back to that pristine kind of a state. Frequencies and nor would you want to because you're addicted to your damn phone. So um, uh, you better do something to protect your body from the, from the EMF. Mm -hmm. And the Shungite is the best approach. Now you can do it uh, individually by wearing Shungite. You can put little Shungite stickers on the back of your phone. You can get Shungite and mash it into dust and paint it in your walls. All different ways you can have Shungite setting next to you if it's within a three-foot proximity uh, to you. It's mostly effective. So, you know, if it's a raw and it's big enough, you can put it in water, all different kinds of things to, um, uh, 
different ways to use it. Really need to research it. It's it's non-invasive and, and can't harm you. Right. Uh, guys, if you're looking for the Beyond Mystic uh, Shungite pendants, there's only a few left. The ones on the right here, uh, that was a limited run, but uh, we're just now um, getting started with the new Sending Ravens one. So you see the raven here uh, on the left. If you go to um, ascensionorganites.com, um, Carla has just put the page earlier today here. Uh, she's been working the last couple of months on the second design here with the Ravens, and uh, she's ready to take orders there. So um, coupon code there is Shungite15. That'll give you 15% off here, either of these uh, two uh, beautiful pendants. And uh, I'm going to be giving away also tonight this beautiful... Um, uh, pyramid from Carla. This is the spring uh, collection. Again, if you're looking at getting any of these in your own possession, uh, go to ascensionorganites.com. Uh, and there for the pyramids, it's beyond mystic in one word. Uh, we'll give you 10% off here uh, for the coupon code. Uh, Cliff, I'll give you the honor as we give away this pyramid here tonight. No, so, hang on a second. All right. One, as one aspect of this, you're going to have to start throwing this in. Please allow extra time for delivery. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Cliff. Um, that's that's a very good point. I think for everything else right now, too, guys, if you want to stock up on your stuff, do it now while you still can. Uh, this luxury that we have, uh, next day shipping uh, with Amazon, perhaps the days are numbered with all of this moving forward into this world. So, yeah, uh, be responsible here. Look at yourself and uh, take the decisions that are best for you and your family here as you stock up uh, for these crazy times. Okay, Cliff, let me give you... Um, uh, the honor here of giving away this pyramid. Typically, what we do is we ask a question in the live chat. Oh my God, uh, almost 20,000 people watching there. <laughs> no, uh, let, let, <laughs> let Joe do it. Let Joe do it. I'd be too nervous. <laughs> okay. Uh, Joe, we have to ask a question that's easy enough for people to remember. Uh, and the first one who answers correctly your question will win that pyramid uh, from Carla. So perhaps do you want to ask about your trade and why and what number you want to get back in in XRP? Is that the question? You have another question in mind? What, what would you like to do? Um, how about what was the low price I saw in that dream? Same dream of 20 cent XRP, but for Ethereum, what was the exact price I got for Ethereum? The low price for Ethereum. Okay, it takes a few seconds for this to populate. What was Joe's low price for Ethereum? <laughs> oh, I think I got it. Nope, not nope. almost. No, almost. Okay. Oh, yeah, right there. TSN, I'm bad. Uh, this one here. TSN, bad. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, TSN Mad. You're the winner of this amazing uh, pyramid here uh, by Carla. If you go to beyondamystic.net, uh, top page there, you can send me an email. Let me know that you're the winner of this pyramid tonight. While you're there, also, if you're interested in becoming a member of the Insider Access Pass, we have the uh, spring annual sale going on now. Spring 50 is the coupon code. It'll give you 50% off here. The annual pass gives this gives you access to all of our content on pay-per-view and priority uh, viewing. And if you're interested in taking a course also with their next astrology or tarot or anything else esoteric please peruse the library here at the beyond mystic dot academy there also uh, the 50 percent discount code is valid up until march 31st and that spring 50 is valid on all the courses and the workshops joe before we go for people who um oh, okay i forgot to mention this you had an interesting note the other day and you were kind of guided to put something up on your own rumble given the times yeah. that we're in now and the panic to own that is just around the corner. Let me bring that link up here. I had this in the private chat for the audience members. What is this? This is on your rumble channel, Joe. Explain what happened and why you put up this video here. Yeah, Entheos messaged me and said, uh, you know, I know, I know you got some videos or how to's kind of thing that's behind your your paywall or whatever but do you think you would be interested in putting it up on rumble and maybe just earn some ad revenue or whatever on rumble or something and um i'm thinking because he says you know there's gonna be a lot of pe people who need to know how to get in and right. start i mean you know get, getting used to it and figuring it out so when he says that to me that automatically tells me he know i mean i know he knows about stuff so He's letting you know crypto is going to be a big deal. And so I, I had replied to him. I said, you know, I had this dream about April and whatever. I said, but um, might be a good idea to go ahead and put that up soon because then people can figure out how to get in <laughs> in case that we do have a, a nice little drop. It'd be the perfect time for them to actually get in and buy something because right. I think it's going to go up quick after that. So um, I thought, man, if anyone else had asked me that, I don't know if I would have done it. But I said, you know, he's asking. He's for the people. I'm for the people. 
You didn't even got to ask me twice, man. So I just said, yeah, let me put that video up there. Give it so, up. So I put the link, guys, in the description box below. It's also in the live chat now. This will bring you to Joe's Rumble channel. I invite you while you're there also to subscribe as Joe is putting more and more content there as we're heading into even more censorship, as you guys know, on mm -hmm. YouTube and other platforms. So please do subscribe to Joe's uh, Rumble channel here, Jason. Four. And for the people, Joe, who need a little bit more than perhaps a crash course, they need a community, uh, they might need some a little extra hand holding. What do you have for them on your Patreon here at patreon.com forward slash Jason Four? Yep, we got a uh, couple plans really. The 20 plan a month is is really all you really need for the most part. Um, the $40 plan is when people, a lot of people ask me for portfolio reviews. You know, I got all these damn coins. Should I get rid of any? You know, and yeah, take that and put it all into this one or spread it across these three, you know, you get a bunch of shit coins, get rid of those, you know, yeah, things like that. Um, sometimes people might have a question about, you know, is this a legit email? I think, do I need to update my treasure? No, don't fucking click on that. Right. It's a scam, you know, like <laughs> shit like that. Before you do it, just message me, you know, <laughs> right, um, right. I'll talk to you, you know, I'll, I'll message you back. So um, most people just need a 20 plan, but I'm, you know, I get these dreams or something, I get a crypto trade or whatever it is. I just, I tend to post it on there and, you know, or it's like what we do called, man, I'm, Spirit said to get VET things up 50% right now, just from a little while ago when he gave it to us. So I'm like, yeah, you know, right. I might want to scrape, you know, many to scrape some off that. So I went ahead and scrape some <laughs> off of that, but I'm in a couple of other trades waiting at the moment, but you know, just stuff like that, you know, and sometimes I'll get maybe an interesting dream or something that has nothing to do with that, but it's like, yeah, I think I should keep this private and share it with these guys. Cause this is really interesting. You well, uh, let me ask you to give perhaps some advice here moving forward. Crypto, the reset, the stock market. Uh, I'll ask you, Cliff, also for your last words of advice here before we go. But Cliff, as it pertains to the markets, uh, planning your trade, trading your plan, uh, not acting on emotion, not winning any stupid prizes here. What would you say to the audience members here before we go? Some words of wisdom here from you. Joe, first. Me first? Yeah. I would just look at a comment. Someone says something. I wear my shun guy something that says in my, it reminded me of that damn song. I wear my shun guy at night so I can so I can block the five G. I love it. We, we have to ask uh, Stephen. We have to ask Stephen to do that one. That's me. Yeah. I wear my shun guy at night. <laughs> no words of you know. Look, we're getting into some serious shit. But uh, Cliff has said this, Woo Woo Dude has said this, I've said this, JC said this, I'm sure other guests JC's probably, you know, had on has probably said this. And it's, we we chose to be alive in this soul, in our soul, in this bodies right now. Like we, we did, somehow we signed up to be here for this big show. Yeah. So it's scary. Some people are going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. These are going to be the guys setting those fires that, that Cliff talked about. You know, these guys have no allegiance. They don't give a shit. They're coming here. They're being paid. They're giving fucking $1,400 credit cards. Here you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, the, the fucking judge rules. Yeah, you guys can carry weapons and everything. Yeah, it's good. You're not a citizen. Don't worry about it. <laughs> these fucking people hate you, yeah. the government, and they're bringing in other people that hate you. And you're just not seeing it yet. But we're here trying to give you the warning. So, Dad, don't freak out. Keep your head in a swivel. And if shit, you know, your gut's telling you something ain't right, get the fuck out of there or whatever. Like, listen to your gut because you don't want to second guess this going forward. You know, you get that hair standing up, something's wrong. I don't know what's happened. Nothing's happened yet. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah. You know, something might be about to go down, whatever. And just, you know, you have to bob and weave a little bit. But we're hopefully giving you guys some news and advice and things that might help you, you know, kind of skate out of this. Right. And for more of that crazy shit show reporting, guys, <laughs> follow Joe on his second YouTube channel. He got a little bit in trouble like I did on the last one here. He's rebuilding his community there at Jason M. Ford. Look at Cliff's and face. Here. Look at his look at his face on there. Yeah. And then look at him now. Somebody's just said Cliff looks like a bodyguard right now. I totally he, Yeah, he's fucking young. <laughs> I was going to put my arm up and show my muscle, but I'll, I'll be embarrassed. <laughs> Cliff, you be rocking. Mine goes down. <laughs> 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 it's a new kind of muscle. Of course, guys, if you want to follow Cliff, also you can do so on his Substack. Lots of amazing audios there to go uh, back maybe a month or two to get up to speed, even on the Elohim conversation. If this is the way you want to educate yourself, please do go visit that. You, of course, uh, can find Cliff on a daily basis here still on Twitter, uh, uh, tweeting quite a bit here on all of these world events. And also... Uh, the World Economic Forum and the Elohim Worship Cult. Uh, Cliff, again, a big thank you for being on. 
what would you share with the audience members here moving forward? There's a lot of weird stuff going on. We're seeing a lot of shell shock in our friends and families, and we're going to see more and more of that here as we get into hyper novelty. So navigating this is not just about, as Joe was saying here too, getting yourself, your house in order, your spiritual house, your physical house in order, but also <laughs> having a very big extended radar in the people around you. Share your wisdom here as how we yeah. navigate all of this moving forward, Cliff. Um, so I have a, I have a advantage on most people because I was born this way, but if you weren't born a paranoid, now is the time to cultivate that as an attitude. <laughs> 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 so, uh, and so, um, uh, my thing is that, um, you know, at my age, especially, right. Uh, I will have very few opportunities to recover from mistakes that might impact my body. So I train my body every day to get it to, uh, you know, I'm trying to reach a particular degree of toughness, so to speak, right? And so this would be good advice for old people that are trying to go through uh, these next few years. Now, the good part of this is, the really good part, is that we do have something coming up in a couple of years uh, as we get into sci-fi world, where if we are able to survive and make it through, a lot of the uh, zero point energy uh, kind of promises of the 50s and the 60s will start manifesting. So, wow. uh, you know, so uh, so it's a real good goal to survive. Uh, as I sa have said, you know, uh, uh, the, the goal is to stay alive through 25, right? Because in 26, they may be able to help your ass, you know, a lot better than than we do now because we'll be unfolding a lot of this new technology. This is going to be the really hard part we're coming into now, where there's still a little bit of normalcy being maintained by the regimes, but the normies are feeling the burbling of all of the energies from universe from that are hitting all of us, and we're ever so much more agitated. We're talking about stuff the way we've never done before. They're hearing it, et cetera, et cetera. So it's starting to impact on them. Normies are going to be the, the wild card. OK, yeah. because you just won't know how they will react. In some cases, you'll find uh, some people in these circumstances, you actually see it if you can stomach to watch it. So, so you have to have situ situational awareness and that situational awareness must take into account your own mind state. Right. Uh, so you really have to start concentrating on uh, sort of like keeping it together being aware of, you know, uh, those things that are impacting you. So if you're under stress, you know, go get a bite of, you know, food or whatever, so that you're going to have to start to like maintain an even strain to get through the chaos that we're all going to be going through over these next few months. And it's going to get ever so much more chaotic after the eclipse, but, but beyond that, after the 20th of April. Can I ask you very quickly to expand on some of that silver lining? You talked about zero point energy if we make it through this hump, but I believe you also mentioned a number of years ago that if we got through a specific hump also, we might get access to new technology uh, for longevity in these bodies. Right. So not right. just the energies from space, but also this culminaric effect of not having the suppression of technology, but also this huge innovation boom. Can you speak? Quickly speak about sure. that on the upper actually, before we leave. Go ahead. Yeah, we're actually in that period of time right now. So uh, there's like the biohacking community, right? The biohacking community has just now gotten to the point where it is possible to combine specific uh, postbiotics and um, uh, other uh, various different kinds of supplements to get this effect where I actually, uh, you think my arms are good, you ought to see my legs. And as, as Jonathan Winters says, you know, to, to uh, Johnny Carson, the legs are the first to go. The legs are the first to go. Yeah. And Johnny Carson says, well, how do you know that? And Jonathan Winters says, well, a guy I met on a bus, a professional basketball player told me that. And so, but anyway, but the point being that, that we can now combine things. And so like urolithin A and uh, plasmogens for the brain and you get a big, as an old person, you get a, it's not going to help Joe. Maybe it'll help JC a little bit, but I've got a feeling in my legs as though I had when I was 18, right? Wow. So, so it's a, it is, so, and we're right that 
at that point with these various supplements. Now, the the nature of it is the combination is going to be just brilliant. So when I say we're going to get this um, boost relative to longevity, I'm not talking about the idea of like med beds and stuff. Those are coming, but those might be 30 years out or 25 years out or something, right? And there's all kinds of issues with those. But I am talking about the ability to know that this particular substance that shows up in the body that is created by the body has these effects on these other substances. And if you combine these two and you're 70 years old, hey, maybe all of a sudden you start feeling like you're 40. And then if you take it long enough, another couple of months, hey, all of a sudden, maybe you start feeling like you could get out and go run with the dog for a couple of miles, right? right. Insofar as your legs and stuff. So uh, we're just now getting into that level of science that won't be um, occluded by authorities. So the lack of authority is going to freak out the normies, but it's also going to free science. You won't have all these gatekeepers saying, no, you can't study that. That's useless. We're not going to give you grants for that. This yeah. sort of thing. And, yeah. and truly, I'm living proof. I'm 70, right? I love it. Thank you so much, uh, Cliff. Uh, a lot of people are saying, I'll have what Cliff High is having. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a very uh, complex cocktail. You might want to look it up and do your own research, but you can find some of that on his Twitter and also on his Substack. He does talk about that uh, quite a bit. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Yes, there was about 19,000 live on rumble and i see 19,800 i think i, was, I saw it. oh yeah plus the 3,000 here we see uh on twitter so 22,000 23,000 uh a hell of a record night thank you so much everyone uh please if you like the show um not even if you like the show if you think it's important these conversations that we're having and you want to have less issues perhaps with the normies popping off <laughs> maybe share this information this was the point uh, of cliff uh graciously giving us his time here today is to share this information so that we can wake up some more people and uh, help them perhaps better navigate all of this because we're all in this together and the more of us that are on the right path here trying to navigate this maybe uh the silver linings that cliff is talking about now can happen a little bit sooner uh, than later as long as we can come together here and cross through uh that uh, critical time we're in now so big thank you to all of yep. you watching uh yeah go ahead cliff uh one thing i did need to say is that i was a vegetarian uh for 35 years and four of those years i was a vegan and i do not recommend it for anyone under any circumstances ever yeah um we need to do another show on that, but uh, I, I'm with you on that too. I went through going to the veggie, the the vegan, and back to what I'm doing now. Uh, and we can do a whole show on that. I know it's triggering to a lot of people, but uh, do your research, guys, and uh, don't be so emotionally attached. Perhaps to your diet would be the recommendation, and look at what works for you. And uh, please, please do your research. Thank you, uh, Cliff, for adding that uh, last note. And guys, again, you can find Cliff on his Substack, on his Twitter, and you can find Joe also on his YouTube and on his Patreon. All the links are in the description box below. This was the work correspondent show guys i love you thank you so much for being here and uh we'll see you again tomorrow night for the beyond the news edition at eight o'clock eastern have a great night Au revoir. <laughs> we'll see <laughs>